Hello people, in this video let us look at the complications uh, because of tracheostomy. So it is divided into three things, immediate complications, then you have the intermediate complications and then you have the late complications. Okay, so let us get started with the immediate complications at the time of operations. At the time of operation, what can be that guys? Hemorrhage, yes, the person uh, you are making this incision so it can tell you immediately what will happen, hemorrhage and what will happen as soon as you open, a, open up the trachea following the opening of the trachea a patient you know what will happen they will have sudden washing out of carbon dioxide all the carbon dioxide will go out and it is this uh, carbon dioxide which is going out right this see this carbon dioxide it carbon dioxide acts as a respiratory stimulus right so now there is no stimulus so the, there will the person will go into apnea so did you understand so what will you give this person then if he goes into apnea you will give 5% carbon dioxide in oxygen okay or assisted ventilation so that is the treatment then pneumothorax so what is this air? Air, right? Pneumo means air in the thorax because you are going to injure, if you injure the apical pleura. Okay. So basically here what is happening, the air is leaking from the lung, right? And it is, a, where, where where is the air going to be? Between your lung and chest wall. Here you will have air. So this is pneumothorax. So what will happen in this case? The lung will collapse, right? So all this will happen because of apical injury. Then moving on. In uh, injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the le recurrent laryngeal nerve, you know, one is here and the other is here and the left one is longer, right? So you can injure this nerve, so that will be recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. What will happen if recurrent laryngeal nerve gets injured? Basically, uh, you will not be able to breathe well because the vocal cords, vocal folds will come to median um, or paramedian position, okay? Aspiration of blood. So, what is this? Aspiration of blood means blood is entering your uh, airway, is it? So, that is aspiration of blood. Injury to esophagus, as usual, you will injure everything, whatever is in the way they are telling you can injure. What and all can you injure esophagus? You can injure recurrent lar laryngeal nerve, you can injure, you can injure apical pleura. Then, what else? All this you can injure. So, that is what is immediate complication of uh, tracheostomy. Now, let us move on to the Intermediate complications. What did we finish? Immediate complications of tracheostomy. What are the immediate complications of tracheostomy? Yes, say hemorrhage. Okay, very good. Then you will injure a lot of things like the apical pleura. You will injure the esophagus. You will injure the um, recurrent laryngeal nerve. So what will happen if you injure the apical pleura, pneumothorax? Then what will happen if you injure the esophagus? Okay, recurrent laryngeal nerve also you can injure. Then what can happen? Uh, the person can aspire blood. Okay, or hemorrhage. You can directly say aspiration of blood here, right? Then, <clears throat> what is what else we saw? Something very important. Uh, it's just there on in the tip of the tongue. What is it? Apnea, yeah. The carbon dioxide will escape and the person will not have respiratory stimulus. So, he will go into apnea. So, we should give administer 5% carbon dioxide and oxygen or give assisted ventilation. Very good. You know what? If we can arrange this, you know, it kind of goes like this. Hemorrhage. Aspiration of blood, injury to all this. These are all injuries. See, these are injuries. Injury to apical pleura, injury to recurrent laryngeal nerve, injury to esophagus and this one is apnea. All right. Now we will move on to the intermediate complications. Okay, guys. Intermediate complications. So, guys, intermediate complications is during the first few hours or days. Okay. So, there can be bleeding which is reactionary or secondary. Reactionary actually means react. Reactionary. Reactionary is something which follows the primary hemorrhage, okay. And um, basically what is this? This is due to the rolling of ligature, dislodgement, dislodgement of a clot or cessation of reflex vasospasm. So basically what is that first? First there is primary, then there's, there will be reactionary and secondary. So primary I think we have finished in the immediate. Now they are, they are talking about reactionary bleeding. What is secondary bleeding? So, what is secondary bleeding, guys? So, secondary bleeding, secondary hemorrhage, it occurs about uh, after 7 to 10, 14 days due to infection. Oh, that's bad, right? Due to infection and sloughing. The pressure of the drainage tube, a fragment of bone, a ligature in the infected area or cancer. So, it is secondary hemorrhage. It occurs after a week, looks like. <laughs> then, guys, uh, displacement of tube. So, the tube can get displaced. Then, the tube can get blocked subcutaneous emphysema so under the dermis epidermis right subcutaneous emphysema 
tracheitis so inflammation of trachea tracheitis tracheobronchitis with crusting in trachea so this is kind of understandable tracheitis tracheobronchitis also a kind of inflammations happening here atelectasis atelectasis is something to do with the lung isn't it this atelectasis is actually the collapse of lung it is deflated or possibly filled with alveolar fluid remember okay and lung abscess again here they are talking about infection so all this is some something you know telling you like there is going to be infection inflammation some abscess uh, fluid is getting filled the tube is getting blocked or displaced then secondary hemorrhage can be due to infection so all this is kind of going in an infection way what do you say guys so we are done with the intermediate complications intermediate complications of tracheostomy what are the intermediate you have the reactionary hemorrhage the secondary hemorrhage then lot of infections mentioned that because of infection there can be secondary hemorrhage infection you can say uh, inflammation you can say tracheitis tracheobronchitis right then um, what else did they say lung abscess atelectasis then uh, what else come on come on see here there is lung and here there is trachea go back here here there is lung and trachea just think what and all did we read about yeah yeah the the tube <clears throat> the tube can get blocked or displaced right that's what they said then what else did we see subcutaneous emphysema yes yes local infection granulations okay let's move on now tracheostomy complications the third part the late complications guys late complications with prolonged use of tube for weeks or months <clears throat> you leave something in the body for open and for so long what will happen hemorrhage is standard looks like erosion of major vessel can happen again hemorrhage okay then laryngeal stenosis narrowing right larynx is getting narrowed due to perichondritis of cricoid cartilage this is what they said uh, right if you do high tracheostomy this is one of the problems they said so you have larynx then you have trachea so now you have to put some direct tube here so trachea is taking all the air so larynx is becoming stenosed it looks like due to perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage tracheal stenosis also can happen tracheal stenosis okay due to tracheal ulceration and infection now trachea also is getting narrowed is it tracheoesophageal fistula due to prolonged use of cuff tube or erosion of trachea by the tip of the tracheostomy tube because of this uh, tube the, uh, that they have put uh, it can be possible that um, there is erosion of the trachea and then there can be a tracheoesophageal fistula so if this is uh, the neck guys which is in front the trachea is in front right so this guy has a tracheostomy now here there is the trachea they have put a tube and behind it there is esophagus now this trachea got eroded because of this tube and there is a tracheoesophageal fistula problems of decannulation decannulation means what removing this uh, tracheostomy tube commonly you will see it in infants and children we need to look at problems of decannulation persistent tracheocutaneous fistula persistent permanently there is some fistula to the skin is it cutaneous tracheo cutaneous fistula problems of tracheostomy scar so keloid and unsightly scar so these people can continue to have a scar there right and uh, they can have a tracheo cutaneous fistula right then corrosion of the tracheostomy tube and aspiration of its fragments into the tracheobronchial tree look at this this tube itself got corroded and all the parts of it right the fragments will get aspired into the tracheobronchial tree of this person because of all this maybe it's some plastic and everything is going inside that's what it looks like so these are the late complications of tracheostomy when you use it for months uh, what will happen obviously this tube is getting corroded and all its parts are going into tracheobronchial tree okay and then if you remove it what will happen probably there is a scar unsightly scar or even there could be a tracheo cutaneous fistula all these are problems with decannulation looks like isn't it and these problems are seen more in infants and children there can be um, because of this tube the trachea is getting eroded and there could be a tracheo esophageal fistula tracheal stenosis laryngeal stenosis always blame hemorrhage in complications Yes, when it comes to this decannulation, right? What they are saying is you should be very careful while doing it. You should do it in an operation theater where you have the services of nurse and anesthetic, you know, because you have to check, right, whether the person can breathe by themselves. So uh, you have to observe the patient. If the patient can tolerate it, the tube can be safely removed. That's what they are saying. 
So they are saying first they will plug this uh, tube that they have put. First they will plug it and see if the patient can tolerate it and then only they will remove this tube after 20. Yeah guys, did you get it? So this tube, whatever they have put, they will plug it. And if the patient can tolerate it, then after 24 hours only they will remove the tracheostomy tube. Okay. So you should have kept the re-intubation equipment ready, okay, immediately. Then after you decannulate, you have to watch for several hours for respiratory distress, tachycardia. Okay, you should check all this uh, oxygen saturation, etc. Guys, are you paying attention? Basically, what are they saying here? Decannulation will have its own problems. So you should decannulate very carefully, especially children and all that. It can lead to respiratory distress, tachycardia, oximetry and all. You should keep ready oxygen saturation monitoring. Then, um, if the person doesn't breathe well, you know, even af after you decannulate, then what could be the reason? The reason could be these only. There could be laryngeal stenosis, tracheal stenosis, tracheal edema, subglottic, that's what, subglottic stenosis, etc. Right? Or the, the condition for which you had originally done the tracheostomy, that itself may be persisting. There could be some obstructing granulation around the stoma. So, the, you have made a hole here, right? The, around the stoma, there could be some obstructing granulations, right? Then, um, there could be tracheomalacia. Incurving of the tracheal wall at the site of the tracheostome. So, wherever you did the tracheostome, there's some incurving could have happened. Then the patient could be psychologically dependent on this tube, you know, and they may not be able to tolerate the resistance of the upper airway. So, they just got so used to this tracheostomy and all that. So, all this is, uh, all these are some problems with uh, decannulation. Okay. So, what are the problems with decannulation? Let's just add it here to have a complete answer for us if they ask complications and then. Guys, we have added all the reasons now. Look at this. Problems of decannulation. Let's take a recap. In this video, we wanted to look at, at the complications of tracheostomy, guys. So, let us look at the uh, three headings. You have the immediate complications and then the intermediate and then the late. Immediate complications at the time of operation that can be hemorrhage, aspiration of this blood, apnea because there is escape of carbon dioxide which was acting as a respiratory stimulus. So, if there is apnea, you will treat them with 5% carbon dioxide and oxygen or assisted ventilation. That can be pneumothorax, you're going to injure if you injured the apical pleura. If you injured the recurrent laryngeal nerve, it will have its own repercussions. Then you can injure the esophagus also. Okay. So you can uh, cut, this can occur with tip of knife. While incising the trachea, you can, you yourself can create a tracheoesophageal fistula and injure the esophagus. Then coming to the intermediate, in the first few hours or days, you can have a, a reactionary bleeding or, or a secondary bleeding after a week like that. There could be displacement of this tube, blocking of this tube. There could be subcutaneous emphysema. There could be tracheitis, tracheobronchitis with crusting in trachea, atelectasis or in lung abscess. There could be infection and granul granulations. Remember in intermediate, they're talking about inflammations and infections. Coming to late complications, when you are using this tracheostomy tube for a long time, uh, for weeks or months, there can be hemorrhage, laryngeal stenosis uh, due to perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage. Tracheal stenosis also can happen due to tracheal ulceration and infection. Tracheoesophageal fistula, because, the, the, because of this tracheostomy tube, the erosion of the trachea can happen and there could be a tracheoesophageal fistula which is a late complication. Intermediate also you saw that um, you yourself can injure the esophagus. That time also there could be a tracheoesophageal fistula. Here they are talking about a late because it takes time to erode, right? Then there can be problems uh, when you are decannulating the person, he can go into respiratory distress or tachycardia. That could be because there is a persistence of the condition for which the tracheostomy was originally done or there could be obstructing granulations or tracheal edema or subglottic stenosis or incurving of the tracheal wall because of your tracheostomy, tracheomalacia or psychological dependent of the patient on this tracheostomy tube or that he is unable to tolerate the resistance of the upper airway. Then there could be a tracheocutaneous fistula and uh, because of this tracheostomy there could be a scar keloid right corrosion of the tracheostomy tube itself and the aspiration of its own fragments into the trachea into the uh, tracheobronchial tree can happen so these are the late complications of uh, tracheostomy so in this video we have looked at the immediate intermediate and the late complications of tracheostomy that's all for now bye bye